out in various ways. You know, there's nothing wrong with the village. Help him out however you choose to. It, it, the only thing is he wants to hear from the landowners themselves. Okay. That's, that's the whole thing. Um, there won't, the, the bar mayor is still working to uh, fill and uh, fill his uh, appointments to various committees. So he has, he has canceled all committees in October. Uh, we probably won't have one until December is the earliest. In fact, I, I would expect to, as long as they're gone, to fill these committees. Probably not until after the first of the year. I don't know if the COVID, COVID is the hold up, what, but uh, they are not, uh, uh, they're not allowing any of the committees, or he's not bringing out any of the names for any of the committees to, to start uh, meeting. So uh, until they do that, uh, there will be no meetings. Uh, and I think uh, there's only a, a two or three meetings, uh, committee meetings. The, the committees that are meeting in Aurora, uh, and those are important to the mayor. Those ones are important to the mayor. Uh, these are various other committees. Um, I don't know if you turned in the name for Chicago representative to Gerard uh, Mayor, but you need to do that. Uh, the other thing is there is a few people upset in town because uh, I think in the 1980s, there was a petition going around that said, uh, we don't want airplanes flying over Sugar Grove. And uh, evidently, uh, I said, well, I don't want the petition. They said, oh, you signed it. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, uh, uh, you know, anyhow, they signed, uh, we signed this petition that I don't remember uh, conveniently, I guess, uh, saying uh, we don't want airplanes. So Arlen Yard was the mayor then. That goes back to the 1980s. And uh, they said, well, what are you going to do about it? And I says, <laughs> well, I says, really nothing, because the only one that controls uh, the flight is the FAA. I said, you know, I says, uh, Crop testers can do whatever they want. The, the uh, aerobatics and uh, flying can do whatever they want. As long as they abide by the FAA regulations of their routes and heights and things like that. So I says there's no control over them. But I says, they said, well, the village should know. And I said, well, nobody's left in the village that would know. I says, I will talk to Amy next time I see her and ask her if she's got any information. And there's nothing to be done except I, there's a few people that have lived here forever, uh, don't like flying, <laughs> planes flying over the town. And then, you know, so I, I'm trying to just say, there's nothing we can do. You know, but, uh, you know that's. That's my report. That's a good one. Did you tell them you're Mr. Airport? Huh? They said, did you tell them you're Mr. Airport from development? <laughs> oh, were you afraid? <laughs> I, I, what? I tried to, oh. I tried to contact them, but I just didn't wait to call them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 and sometimes I'm afraid I don't know what she wants to say. So uh, you know, I and I try to find the truth again. Uh, I would like to speak on uh, number ten. Okay. Oh, hold on. What was that? Nothing on the agenda, but something else. 
Okay, during public comment? Public comment. All right, out of time. All right. We'll get back to that. You're coming back. That, I think, he's going he's gonna to hold you to the three minutes. We'll stay there. Just stay there, Joe. It won't be long. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you, Joe. All right. Next up, we have public comment on items scheduled for action. This evening, under the consent agenda, we have approval of the minutes from September 20th, Special Village Board meeting. Approval of the minutes of the October 5th, uh, 2021 Village Board meeting. Approval of the vouchers. Approval of the treasurer's report. Under general business, we have an ordinance granting a special use to operate a storage container rental business at 6 Main Street. An ordinance approving zoning variations at 6 Main Street. An ordinance amending outdoor storage fencing requirements. And an ordinance amending the village code contract measure. Do we have any public comment on those particular items? Okay, hearing none, I'll close that portion. Can I get a motion to, well, first of all, does anybody want to remove an item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda as stated, previously stated? So moved. Okay. Trustee Heron? A second? I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Shomas. Roll call, please. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Shomas? Aye. Trustee Lindy? Aye. Trustee White? Aye. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Trustee Walter? Aye. Excellent motion passes, thank you. Under general business, um, we have, <laughs> let's just lump the first three together here, A, B, and C. Walter, um, can you enlighten us as to the yes. floor report, please? Uh, at the uh, last board meeting, when we sort of discussed, um, the, I mean, generally, we had the direction for the village board, uh, you know, what the outcome uh, is likely to be. However, the board also raised an issue about whether or not the applicant had the authority to uh, request a variation of the special use permit on the property that is leasing. Um, so since that meeting, uh, the applicant, as well as my office, have been in contact with uh, IDOT concerning uh, that request. Uh, don't expect there to be any uh, difficulty in getting that authorization. We just don't have it in hand. Um, so we're uh, uh, recommending that the board uh, they want to continue this matter to November 2nd for the final action. Thank you. The one thing I want to mention about it um, <clears throat> is that it seemed like after the last board meeting we had several items that were addressed that were supposed to go in, in the new ordinance, if you will. And having the board report be just a, po a postponement without the ordinance behind it, um, it doesn't give the board an option if they so chose to vote on this tonight contingent upon IDOT approval as well as attorney review. So I would just ask that going forward, if we have an item that is close, that you attach the ordinance behind it so that if the board doesn't go with your recommendation to postpone, that they actually can take action. But seeing that we don't have an ordinance in front of us to review, obviously we need to postpone the first three items. So that's, that's my request for going forward. Um, and then the village could have, the board could have dis even discussed it to see if there was anything else in that new ordinance that needed to be raised for the vote then on the second. So knowing where we are today, can I get a motion to postpone item A, B, and C under general business as previously stated? So moved. Second. Okay, first out of trustee Shomas and a second out of trustee Karen. Roll call please, Allison. Trustee Shomas? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Walter? Aye. Trustee Lundy? Aye. Trustee White? Aye. Trustee Vaughn? Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Okay, next up is an ordinance amending the village code contractor yard. Walter? Okay, at the uh, board meeting, uh, there was a spirit of discussion concerning this uh, proposed amendment, and uh, I believe I have captured uh, all of the concerns and issues that were raised by the board, in particular Trustee White, and um, the uh, proposed amendment has been uh, revised accordingly. 
Um, you know, specifically, um, what we addressed was the minimum size of each principal, additional principal building that can be placed on the uh, contractor's yard. Um, and also make clear that the contractors or the additional principal building uh, had to comply with the zoning requirements for the zone district in which it was located, as well as um, uh, the uh, uh, building design and material requirements uh, had to comply with the uh, zoning district in which the building was located. And um, um, I, think, I think those were the uh, Changes. So we're presenting the ordinance to you for uh, approval with those revisions. And the one item was just pulled off. I can't remember what it was marked last time that we didn't get clarification. Couldn't figure out what the planning commission uh, yeah. was trying to do. Yeah, the public vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there any discussion on that? Um, is it actually, I thought of the question as I was sitting here longer. Um, so after the contractor's yard closes, it's just that it could be any use that's allowed in the district with multiple buildings, right? Essentially? Yeah, theoretically, yeah. Is there any way that we can ensure that somebody doesn't just come in and, you know, say they're going to use it as a contractor's yard for a year and then shut that down for the purpose of getting multiple buildings? You're saying that they wanted to run two businesses out of one property or something like that? Not necessarily, but they wanted to have you know, multiple buildings, but you know, not necessarily a contract to do. Well, I, I, I think in that instance, uh, I, it, it, would, it would be uh, uh, you know, a, a difficult enforcement issue, but the, the, uh, the multiple primary buildings were permitted only for the contractors there, not any other use. So if another use was established on the property, they have to pick a building to occupy. And then raise the same. Or the largest building would have to be the uh, primary use. Well, yeah, or, that, or, that, or that all buildings would have to be used for the one primary use. Uh, no, because we're, we're only making an amendment for multiple principal buildings for the contractors are use, not any other use. Well, okay, so contractors move out. Now they have a yard for a lot of buildings, or a lot that has uh, three large buildings. Now. Right. Um, would we require that all those buildings have the same use? Uh, well, I'm taking the position that Any, any other use that would occupy the property is entitled to be in only one of the buildings. And then they could be used in the Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's what we're creating here. Hmm. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but they would be grandfathered in because of the previous tenant. No, because the, the multiple principal buildings are permitted only for the contractor's yard use. So if that use goes away, the subsequent use, provided it complies with the underlying building history, is entitled to occupy one principal building. So trustee White was correct that we could have a situation where a subsequent use of the property can only occupy a larger building. That we have, you know, then the question is what do we do with the other building? But that might be, uh, that might be a situation that is best dealt with when it occurs rather than trying to predict. Well, I'm just wondering if we need to put something in here that says, you know, uh, if it's no longer a contractor's yard, then only one building used as a principal structure or as a principal building. Um, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to that.
how would you ever know if you were the subsequent purchaser? Well, I know that. To me, it seems kind of hard to prove, right? I, 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 I don't. Yeah. Don't, don't you have to disclose that stuff at the time of purchase? No. They have to check with They have to do their due diligence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm almost inclined to say that, you know, any subsequent user can use it for storage only, maybe, or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, some use of it doesn't mean just to have to build it. I mean, I, I can see that running additional operations out of it, but, you know, but, uh, you know, if it's available for storage, it's for storage or something. But, but you're assuming the contractor's yard that. <coughs> Is no longer. It's no longer there. Yeah. So let's say that you know you've got a contract and they're occupying it and put everything on, and then somebody else comes in and they you know they have a small manufacturing operation. You know they maybe pick one of those buildings for they can't use all the buildings for the manufacturing operation. I've seen cases where there was a a parent that had a construction company and then the son had a, I don't remember what the other business was. It had nothing to do with the construction that they had kind of a shop and they had an office on one end to where if you're going to the shop, you went around that way. And if you're going to the son's mm -hmm. business, you went to the parking lot up front. So that would be a situation where like a family member has something else. So I have seen that before. Yeah, I think that's what we're saying. We don't necessarily want to do Correct. That's, uh, you know, it's kind of this bypass of the, the one building one line. Right. Well, and so a lot well, of you can see a building go unused, and about maybe, like you say, buyer come in without really knowing that it's that they can't use it. Yeah. Does that get fixed here, or is that is that something that's totally separate? Well, I think that's what you're saying. The deal doesn't come, or yeah. would it, would a line a line in there now, like Jamie is suggesting, would that fix it? Or do we just, we're making more out of this stuff? Sometimes that happens too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking But it's a good point. I mean, if we're going to make it that you can only use one of the buildings, I think we've got to put it in the ordinance. Yeah, I would propose that we uh, modify the, the amount of do this and that. Um, that if somebody, uh, if the situation arises where we have a user that wants to use multiple buildings and the contractor's use is uh, no longer present on the property, I think you'd be able to at that time. But they're only entitled to use one unless they get other right by secret areas or something. Right. Is that something that we condense down that's going in this ordinance and we can approve with that attached? Subject to attorney review as well. I think so. Okay. So Walter, <laughs> I love it when I have to take notes. Sorry to just spring it as I was reading it, it just came to mind. Well, it's a real well, concern. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a real concern. Yeah. yeah. What are we what are we adding and where? Are you adding it to this? It's not going under contract here by amendment to be. That's not there. Uh, are you just doing it in the ordinance in general? Section one zoning general provision? Well, if, if, uh, if, if the board would give me the liberty to insert it where I think it's appropriate in part two uh, in the exhibit A that's attached to the ordinance, uh, I can take it from there. Okay. So. I would think under 11 or 15 where it grants the multiple provisions would be where you think. Well, we put it both, quite frankly. Subject to the Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and we're just doing it to say that should the contractor's yard no longer be there, the be user the primary, be the primary use. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then the then the subsequent building, then the then the owner has to pick a building. Is what we're saying? Yeah. And only one building may be used to. Okay. We, we 
Yeah, and, and if, it, if it's not using district resources, okay. town, and country, town and country gives us stuff all the time. Oh, no. It does. Not all the time. They give us right? stuff. Right? I mean, there was a, there's, oh, maybe you don't know, but your wife knows. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was a great idea. It is a great idea. And thank you for bringing that to the attention to the board. Uh, I know I have to take that survey myself, so. Okay. I do need to part. Would it be okay if I leave one of Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, any additional public comments? Mr. Bull? Yes. I'd like to speak about the town center. Uh, I haven't followed it, so I really don't know where it's at. Uh, I'm not against it. Uh, uh, but uh, it's more of a wish. I hope you design and build the town center, that it's going to be a viable town center. 50 or 100 years from now. And uh, I believe that can be done. It'll take some uh, redevelopment and, and, and new ideas over the time. But, you know, uh, that's my wish. Um, something lasting. Uh, as far as the uh, Village offices you're building, you know. I hope you design that uh, so that uh, it's uh, a one time, lifetime building for you. No matter how big uh, the village grows, uh, 20,000 or more or whatever, uh, you've designed it to uh, handle the growth for the village forever. Uh, I know if you say the uh, well, you know, there were twenty thousand people. Some of the people in town have a conniption fit, <laughs> and, uh, and all because uh, a lot of people move in and, and they close the door behind them and say, "Oh, it's just the right amount of people for us." So, and uh, when this building was designed, uh, it was proposed to build a bigger building at that time. Uh, but the word got out that, uh, hey, they're building a Taj Mahal. Uh, you probably recall that. that you know, they, all around town, they said, oh, it's going to be a Taj Mahal, and we can't have that. So uh, they cut it back to what they originally wanted. So, you know, I mean, the street is too small, this is too small. And so, uh, you know, I, I hope you do have a plan for expansion uh, that, you know, will cover the village 50, 100 years from now. Uh, or municipal government center is in the building probably over 100 years. And uh, so it, it can be built and designed and things like that. That's, that's what I would like to see, that if you have something lasting, uh, do away with this well we built for today, and, and uh, that's what the people will accept. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I don't know if you have any pushback or you will, but those are my wishes. So thank you for listening. Thank you. I'm sure Trustee here will enlighten you during Trustee reports, which if everybody else had their way, we'd be there soon. So <laughs> we're getting there. Hang on. But thank you, Joe, for your comments. Um, under discussion this evening, we have item A, economic development. Uh, Brett? Sure. The, uh, hopefully you had a chance to look at the board before. I know there's uh, a fair amount of uh, information in there in the uh, the finance discussion is, is, is it can be a difficult read, so uh, certainly as we go through that, if you have any questions, if you myself and Matt will go ask the best we can. Uh, the fundamental thing is there's been a lot of discussion, I think it was on the uh, various initiatives or action plans to explore economic development. The concept that's before you is to hire a full-time economic development director. Um, 
Jen, myself, Walter, and Jen's got a couple more meetings we have that met with the uh, current uh, economic development director in Dallas Grove, who previously had been in Oswego, to get some, some uh, just perspective from that person. And I think most of it um, was a, uh, a, a confirmation of what we were already thinking with some, you know, some, some ideas that we haven't necessarily thought of. I don't know if it was anything revolutionary, if you will, but it was, I'd say, more of a confirmation. And so what we put together is a kind of a, I, I would call it a combination job, descript, job description recruitment profile for a full-time position and a kind of budget. The budget, uh, the salary on there is based on uh, numbers that, the, that that gentleman had provided on what his belief is that uh, we would be looking at to hire someone. Uh, there are some uh, communities in our area that have either recently hired or are currently hiring. Um, the communities are bigger and their salaries are a little bit higher than we're showing, but that's to be re expected. So um, I'm not sure uh, where, how you want to go with the discussion yeah. here. Like I said, it's really two parts. One is, to be, you know, is it a need that the board wants to fill? And you know, what would those duties be? What would we be looking for in the director? Second part is the budget for that, and uh, I want to make note on the budget. Um, what we were thinking and was confirmed was that if we are uh, looking to hire a full-time consultant or some type of uh, support staff would be necessary. There isn't a person on staff now who could fill that role. Uh, they could fill it based on skills, maybe, but not based on time. There's no, there's no extra hours in community development or having them. Oh, by the way, you're also now supporting this person. So we do include in the budget hiring a, uh, a part-time assistant, is just a, the, the name we put on there. And then uh, we did include um, $20,000 budget for membership, smart material, you know, those type of things. So to Brent's point, it's twofold. First, uh, need base and the discussion based on what you all, how you all feel about hiring this person. And feel favorably toward it, let's talk about that, and then the job description as a whole. And then we can talk about the numbers because that's where, where we're putting that into the discussion. So, any feedback on the role in general and hiring this position? I, I will give you my perspective, <laughs> so maybe that will help spur the conversation. Um, we, and I think I brought this up at previous meetings, we, hired uh, next site with the hopes that they would then be bringing developments to the village and we would compensate um, once the building was occupied that's the way i understood the contract is that once the user moved in then they were compensated depending on the use that came with that being said we know it's a slow process um, but we also know that next site is working in multiple areas not just focused on sugar growth and what someone another community might have as a need is not necessarily the same need that sugar growth has so um, the data that we we have received so far from next site is invaluable i think it's fabulous um, that will continue to change and we had a meeting uh, about a week ago with some business owners that came and being able to give our current business owners that information that helps them with their business is a great benefit to next site as well for, for them and that value. So it's a value add. The, the bad news is you don't have someone, I mean, he's a um, we, he's not he's not responsible to any of us. I mean, if there's no tangible end date that he can say, oh here, we need you to have this done by this time. We need and we're and I'm really able to say, hey, what what have you done? Who have you contacted? Uh, what's happening? What's forthcoming? It's hard to measure. So, in my mind, it was, and I thought this before we ever did next site. To be honest with you, brought it up before we ever had that contract was hiring an economic developer. And my position, um, I agreed with that, voted for it, but it hasn't. Now it just solidifies the fact that we're not really in economic development unless we're in it, and dabbling in it isn't effective. So. We either take the plunge and rip the band-aid off and commit to the effort, or we don't. But we can't say we're trying to move our village forward with economic development if we're not really in that business. So this is an effort to get in that business, hire a professional, and, um, 
and then use the collaborative effort of the village board and residents to say, this is what we want here. We have a comp plan that's getting ready to start, and then go through that process, identify where things need to be in the community, and that's their job. They now have a map and what everybody wants, and um, hopefully bring some business to town. So. Are you suggesting we wait until that's done? No, because that's starting. We, we're gonna, we have to talk about a steering committee, but Walter, if you want to give the board an update on the uh, CMAP, where we stand, and what the next step yeah, is. The uh, uh, public outreach uh, this schedule will begin next month. Uh, we've been uh, working with uh, CMAP and the consultant on the uh, website that uh, the consultant's going to be uh, making live shortly. So that'll be the start of it. <clears throat> when do we expect to have it done? Uh, contractually, uh, they have to be completed. Uh, I think it's October of 2030. The end of 2030. It's a process. We can't wait two years. One of the things that, that again, we knew and was, was reiterated is that Economic development traditionally is um, both sides, if you will, of you know retail. What a lot of people most you know, think of is we want more store, we want more of that, and as much if not more of it traditionally it is not retail economic development. It is it is that industrial base, you know, those other uses, um, and, and I think that's something that if this effort goes forward, the board will need to spend some time on you know, before that person brought in large degree and some of it may be in cooperation with that person on okay, you know, how much effort and what's the focus and what's realistic on both the you know retail and commercial side and also on that employment based and industrial side, you know, to, to, to bring you know those industry, those jobs into the community that you know provide. You know, the retail provides for the residents options, things they want to do, it provides sales tax, the, the other stuff provides the property tax base and the jobs. Any discussion? Anything you feel like? Uh, one, do you agree? I mean, let's start with that. Do you agree that it's a need and that we should commit to the effort? What did you just say about wait? Wait until we have. That was Jamie. <laughs> I was asking if they're suggesting we wait until we have time. Oh, right. Okay. Which yeah. would be two yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Not only would that be two years, but my opinion would be that you know, we do hire this person and they, they hopefully provide valuable insight into that process. Right. Because you know, a lot of constituents say, I'd love to have that, or I think that would be as great fitter as possible. And hopefully, we're hiring an individual experience to say, yeah, that to either reaffirm that or say that's probably not what you want to do or you can't do it. And kind of why. I think that's my biggest. Just initial thought is we don't really know. We're trying to get that identity and, and get some development, but I don't think we have that roadmap or that we don't know what to focus on exactly what we want. We know what's big is e-commerce and distribution. Mm -hmm. Other than that, what, what, what other economic development? I, I don't know, but what, I, I would wait until we know what our village Oh, is that direction? We currently have a map. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, I don't see that we're going to change it significantly. Um, you know, from where residential is going to be and where commercial is going to be. We've got, you know, main corridors that are going to try to look bigger commercial. We've got an airport that's, you know, uh, you know, I can put a lot of residential around this. You can try to focus your industrial around there or around the whole area. I don't think those main big circles are going to change much. I think Walter, you think there. I mean, so I think you know having somebody that you know, at least target uh, kind of like what Charles does, but you know that's really doing it just for reps and you know has that ability to just say you know sugar and roll. Uh, you envision this person taking a little bit of a load off to the development as well? Well, I mean, the more we 
we talk with community development. I think that, I think that and I try to say this publicly as, as much as I can, is there is a misconception in our community that this role is currently Walter's job, and it's not his job. Right. So right. we truly have a gap. We don't have someone filling this. But the community here is community development, right. and they say, that's Walter's job. Why isn't he bringing these things to town? That's not his job. And so we do have a, a position to fill so that we can. I mean, we, we grew 200 people in 10 years, roughly, a little more than 200. Yeah. And we have, we have some, and, and there hasn't been much uh, commercial development. There hasn't been much development in general. Um, and, and quite honestly, when I have conversations with developers, it is still out there. Oh, yeah. People will say, why do you even own the property insurance? And I think, why? We're pretty. We're a pretty open board. Come and bring us your ideas. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of work. To, there's a lot of work to do. And the community development director that we met with, and, and what the way this job has been, uh, this job description has been created, is they're already doing it. It's not a favorable job that you give to somebody who maybe has. You know, background in business and they're a resident in Sugar Grove, they're passionate about the village. Um, it's somebody who's in this industry, they know who the Starbucks broker is, they know they know who every broker is of every major business, and they have those contacts. And if they don't, they're working within their professional network of other community development directors that have them. So the contact we met with absolutely has that. What did I say? Community development? Listen, you know. I think Walter should do it. <laughs> I'm not a developer. Um, point being is that they all, it, it's like any industry, right? There's networking within your industry, and you make those contacts and you know who they are. So that's who you're reaching out to. Uh, Next site is working on a regional um, and national, on regional and national brands and developers, but it's. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say what that effort really looks like without criticizing him because he's a nice man and I think he wants to do. He gets paid a, a commission for getting a project here in town. Um, but we don't really know what's there. Uh, this is, I mean, it's, my, it's, it's an opinion. I think it's, it's needed, it's, it's warranted, but it, again, it's up to the board to make that decision. So that's why we're here. I guess my question is, um, I, I can see if we want development, we need to go out and get development, and that's fine. My question is, if we can't have it right now, instead of just getting the economic development, you know, head, you know, one person do it, and then one and a half I mean, I'm just asking if we need that half person, because that's, you know, fifty thousand dollars you wait and see. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think you know. Their budgeting staff is budgeting, anticipating that this person is going to need a half person, and so it's been calculated uh, for the compensation. And so Matt can get into that. That's why it was done. It doesn't mean that they get hired at the same time. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't see if we need that at that point. And you know, maybe we're doing so well. We yeah, I think the way it's proposed or thought is that the person who's hired as economic development director would right. make the hire of the person assisting them. They're not doing the same job. Yeah. The idea is that you're not paying a director to to spend the bulk of their time, you know, kind of doing the, the front ends, whether it's putting in the marketing materials, answering the cold call, shooting out the emails, making the appointments. That's not what we want the bulk of the time doing that, that generic kind of support role. Um, you know, this, that, that's the idea. Of that's a guy that's going to be out on the road five days a week, cool. six to seven hours a day, going to trade shows, networking, and visiting, you know, with other uh, organizations, uh, I would expect. And that administrator would be basically saying, here's where you're going tomorrow. Here's where you're going tomorrow. I mean, this, in, in the private sector, this is a business development role. It's a sales role. It's how do we get people in? So I've supported salespeople in the role that challenge the organization. Behind that, 
is to keep the warehouse moving, right? So if this guy is successful, are we prepared as a board to address the potential deals that they could be bringing in and closing? Because some of those could be pretty challenging, right, as far as investments we have to, we have to make. And I think to get that right person in here, you basically say, look, um, you know, the community, you know, the board has agreed, you know, for uh, hypothetically, a new tip district in this area, make some money available. This is the area you're going to go target for us. And this is the amount of money that, you know, might be available for it, right? Um, I guess I look at it even as the other in, 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 in more tangible side of things. And honestly, if, you're, if you're, I'm thinking this out, Right, I, I I think we need a need. I think we might be a little too early on it right right now because I think we need to factor in the other areas of the foundation. And let me explain. Um, uh, because we spent a lot of time talking about you know um, uh, restaurant research right over the last couple of months. That's kind of an obvious thing. We we got that data that came in that says money's going outside of the community for restaurants. Um, there isn't a bank in the world right now that's going to put any money toward an independent um, restaurant proprietor to allow them to build a building from the ground up. And we don't have the ability to put a restaurant in there, really to speak of, in any you know, particular um, location. So I think um, that, that might be an immediate challenge. I, it, in my opinion, when I've hired business development individuals and I've had them in, it's I've always, I didn't even go to the directors and the VP saying we need this role until I had absolute goals, measurable goals and metrics that this person would be responsible for hitting. And that per whatever that may be for a village, right? I don't know, more compared to apples to oranges, private sector, uh, public sector. But I think there might be some tangible areas here we can say, look, you're going to bring in X number of new businesses in, in, in your first year, and that's what your focus is going to be. Or your commission, or whatever that, that case may be. Because I think that's kind of the mindset of these individuals that, that we would want in here, right? We want to measure that. I mean, the, the effect of that is more revenue for the community, reduce the tax base for the homeowners, uh, allow us to, you know, to hire more police officers, get a better facility for it. So, right, this is, this is a chancy proposition to make that initially, you can see I'm smiling, I'm kind of excited at the prospect about this, you can't see it through, through my mask. Um, but it is a little risky, right? Because we're saying we want to go and do this before we know how we're going to support it fully in the, uh, in, in the background. And are we prepared? I, I've been yammering for a while. Um, I just want to add one thing, and I don't mean to cut you off, but we just approved at our last board meeting a six-unit complex, and you would assume that, based on your scenario, that he paid cash for that, or that's a cash project, which yeah. I doubt it is. Right. So there is money that is flowing. We have somebody who's proven that they're going to make an investment in our community and create six units for restaurants. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not, it's not possible, but if he comes out and says, look, I got, you know, Eight, ten new restaurants I can bring in here, you know, uh, in the first quarter next year. Where are we going to put it? Right. Well, so I, I think those are things we have to think about. <laughs> we, we're I trying to drum up that. I don't know that I. I, I don't know. We're com I don't know if I'm comfortable sharing like timelines, but I know that from the town center committee's perspective, we're looking at sooner rather than later, and some of it is a little bit aggressive, so that when two years comes around and this plan is finished and then we go to hire, it's too late. We hope to have already yeah. set some things in motion to have a new village hall built. And I don't think that we're trying to put that in the middle of a cornfield with no, no other plans of things to go around. So as we start to plan for our village hall, that's part of the package. We've got, I can you know, put the money out there, but, um, you know, like Prairie Grove Commons, you know, that project, you know, don't forget, they've got additional outlots, and in particular, on the Galena side, I can't remember the lot number, but, uh, you know, I worked with the 
division comes out and it's the lean up, there's a space for a building there that they don't have a user. They pull this up front that could be, you know, it could be a multi-user kind of building. I think they're, quote, ready to build a building if they have end users. Um, we have a, uh, you know, the, 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 group, the group lasting of the, the old bank up there. Um, you know, they've, oh, okay. I believe the new owners have said for months that they're ready to invest in it, but they need somebody to operate if it becomes a restaurant. Got the, the we haven't talked to recently, but the gentleman who owns the building that Jimmy Johnson all those, and he's expressed over the last couple of years he's ready to do another project and sure grow, but he needs tenants before he'll yeah. find a lot of other buildings. So sure, I think yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing's done until it's done, but I, I do think that there are people that are ready and willing to invest if they have end users. And I, on the retail side, I think the other part of it is on the non-retail side. We've got, whether it's you know the BEI property across from Lamonti, we had a couple of uh, development groups interested in that. Um, a few months ago, one of them backed out because they have, you know, they're busy with other projects. And, and we're trying to check kind of the stats of the other. Um, you know, between that, obviously the Crown property is still hanging out there, let alone you know, we had a meeting you know, last week right across the street. I believe this person is going to be integral in all of those. I think it has to be. And I, I, I feel comfortable saying right now that, you know, take out a look at the DEI property. Um, if we had somebody that was out there going, okay, I can find, I can put together the users that are out there that are looking for existing buildings or short term turnaround with a potential developer and also somebody that knows, you know, that's not in a typical use, <coughs> but. You know, that, that they know the incentive side of it, whether in different areas of TIF district or um, an enterprise zone or just a straight property tax abatement. You know, I think that area is something that, that there's a ton of possibilities there, but we don't have that person on staff dedicated oh. to trying to put all those moving parts together. So I think I think you know enough about what the community wants in enough areas that you know, there's not a reason to wait because we don't know what we want, defining, you know, where we want them to prioritize. I think one thing that, um, you know, Walter and I have talked about, and I think Michael reinforced it, is that it's diff two things. It's difficult to put a timeline on it. Um, it's, and I think Michael's exact words. He was not aware of anywhere in the country any use of any type of commission for this role in a public sector. Any, any Doesn't mean you can. Were they compensated by commission? He said he's not aware of it anywhere in the United States, any no, but we have we have bonus plans and uh, bonus targets over here within our. Uh, village. Well, I think I mean, maybe we're talking two different things. I'm guessing. Yeah. Right now. I, I was envisioning you were saying like, okay, here's a base salary, and you get a commit a straight commission based on. Oh no no no! That's I was, that's I, was I, was I, I apologize. I misunderstood. If you know, if you want if you want your bonus this year, hypothetically, we want three new restaurants and. You know, a new industrial park. So beyond his, his base salary is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Or first. Something, yeah. something they're measurable for, right? And this is this is the type of role after the fact that pay for itself theoretically, right? Bring in more more tax base. In yeah. So I, I think uh, you know I I've said before that I'd like to see um, some help in the community development department. And if this gives that, I'm in favor of it. Um, especially under the circumstances that we're talking about. I mean, you know, the market's good. You guys are getting inundated with these requests all the time. And uh, it's just going to you know, keep having keeps on the so um, It's not going to be better. And uh, I think it's a serves two purposes really it uh, helps uh, current need that we have in community development as a stress relief uh, and I think it also gets us uh, somebody who's out here you know being a bush because you know we, we've seen so many times sites go up you know pre-leasing buildings and then nothing happens and that's what gets the financing, like you know, having you know, a certain number of tenants, a certain uh, percentage.
percentage of the space released, and um, and that's what you know. That's what we need to get going, and then we'll get the building. Um, so I think personally, I'm in favor of it. So long we've sat here and said, come to Sugar Grove, and nothing has, right? I mean, a little bit, but not much. I think it's time to make a change. That's what this is all about. We're going out there, and we're, we're getting people and bringing them to us. But they'll know that we're open for business, that we want you here. Uh, we just want to spread the word around to other people, other owners of other businesses that might attract them here. That Really felt we're closer business for many years. So anything that helps us on that front end is well worth the investment. So I'm 100 percent good for it. We had one other thing if I could. When we had the uh, last EDC director, um, we ended up with one of the nation's largest shopping center developers proposing shopping center in Chicago. It was because of the work that the community development director was, was doing. Um, I think we have to do it if we want to start getting that kind of stuff in there. Well, I appreciate that. We've got two that are wholeheartedly in. <laughs> And I know that's fine. I'm not voting on it. If I can ask the mayor, that would be helpful. I think it will be. One of the things is that you know, we don't need to have all the answers, all the direction, everything, certainly not tonight, but not necessarily even before we start advertising or interviewing. Walter and I just talked briefly about, um, you know, part of one of the concepts we've kicked around is to essentially, you know, not necessarily a traditional interview. I normally see what it would be, you know, depending upon what we get goes to that and invite people in to say basically sell us. Yeah. You know, and if, they, if they're good, they'll have done their research and they'll, they'll know what the opportunities are here. We don't have to lay it all out for them. The right person's going to walk in that door and be able to do a hour long presentation and say, this is why you should hire me because here's all the assets and everything you have and this is how I'm going to make it all work. And I mean, I, I, I view that process, they're going to help us define the role. You know, and if we don't find that person, then we, maybe we, didn't, you know, we haven't found the right person yet. So I, don't, I don't think we have to have all the answers. Oh, and I wasn't suggesting no, no, that. I, 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 I was saying that you know, that's just real. a great dialogue. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a change in mindset around here. And let's, yeah, let's keep talking about it. I, and I think somebody said there's a, there's a leap of faith, and also I think somebody said that it should pay for itself. Which might be a good segue, and that we can't come back to this yeah, for discussion. Yeah, for sure. Matt, I, if you're willing, I, I think I'd rather have you try to walk through that than, than me butcher it. So. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to kind of try to dissect it and make it as easy as possible to understand. Uh, we're really going to be focusing on two of our funds, the infrastructure fund and general fund. Um, so, in the previous meetings, um, actually on September 21st, when we made all those transfers, initially transferred $225,000 to the infrastructure fund. Uh, at the time, it was for road maintenance, salt, et cetera. Um, so that really transferred out the $225,000 that we currently have budgeted in the general fund for salt and ice to the infrastructure fund to cover that expense. That then frees up $225,000 in the general fund. So that's covered for fiscal year 22, which we're currently in. So that expense is now out of the general fund and in the infrastructure fund at full, already uh, funded. So what that does is it frees up to 225000 in the general fund. So then, as we go through, obviously if we're moving those funds over to Fund 35, how do we fund that for going forward um, to use those funds for the general fund if this position went forward? Um, Currently, we are collecting about $150,000 more in non homeworld sales tax than we currently have obligated for the bonds. So that money is just going into that fund as fund reserves. It's not dedicated to any type of expense at the current time. So what that does is that gives you $150,000 of actual 
revenue stream going into that fund of the 225 needed. So in reality, that leaves $75,000 a year to fund out of that fund 35, which is the infrastructure fund. So to kind of get back to how do we fund out the general fund going forward, I mean, we just read the 225, so that leaves in general fund about 50, call it $50,000 extra above this budget that we have. Um, to fund road maintenance going forward, we can use the 150000 in common rural sales tax. Um, that leaves the 75000 uh, Currently, we have about $2.9 million in fund balance. That's not totally earmarked for anything. It's been discussed for Phase Lane Bridge and Park at 47. Traffic signal, but the Phase Lane Bridge, we don't have enough information to know when that's going to be replaced. And Park at 47, we do believe we'll have um, funding that from the state to do that. So you kind of freeze up the $2.9 million in reserve that you can use for the other $75,000 each year. Um, and, and what this really is is like, is like a four-year budget that we're looking for because that gets us through the non proposal sales tax bond falling off. So on top of having the 150 that it currently has, once that falls off, it's about another 500,000. So total, you're going to have about 650,000 additional funds from non rural sales tax, which is strictly for infrastructure. Doesn't matter what kind of infrastructure it is. Um, so that that covers your salt purchases going forward. Now that we move that over to the um, infrastructure plan, you have the economic developer that position or slash department if there's extra staff covered from that transfer, leaving the extra fifty thousand dollars. If to do both projects, meaning the economic development and a potential village hall. Um, what we can do in scenarios that we've received in debt services is a kind of um, step ladder type bond units where it's smaller in the beginning and then they kind of inflate afterwards, which meaning we can get it as a smaller dollar amount in the beginning until the non rural sales tax falls off. That frees up extra funds in the road fund is needed that we can get for general fund expenses over to. However, with the position, we believe that it would be able to sustain based on sales tax, um, and we kind of just use the current stuff we know, current road comments and then the lot 17 as our, our number to project, um, as if we believe that could support the additional bond payment as well as the economic development coordinator. Um, so in that first four years up until fiscal year 27, the bond payment on a $5.3 million bond, which is the highest we did, um, I don't know if anyone remembers, during my presentation, that was a, basically a 10,000 square foot building was $5.3 million is what the debt service was. That comes out to a $90,000 general fund bond payment for the first four years. And then it'll inflate to 215. Uh, so what that does is it means we have 50,000 extra still not from the salt. So we have 40,000 to go towards the 90, there's an extra 50 that's needed for the village hall in those first four years. We believe sales tax projections on just those two new developments will cover that. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to the sphere 27, when the bond inflates, it meaning the total of about 215, then you either look at these little are those developments producing the sales tax, or we have freed up now the non rural sales tax money that we can transfer general fund eligible expenses to that fund going forward to cover the bond. We're a lot of moving parts. I totally get it. But I've heard it multiple times. <laughs> to try to I'm sure you have lots of questions. There's no, there's no cut in roads, quite honestly. <laughs> Would you say six hundred thousand? 
Yeah, uh, right now it's about 650 that we bring in in non world sales. I mean, you yeah. you could up your you know world program yeah. at that time as well. So, right. I mean, so this yeah. will not decrease our current world program. And then obviously by 27, even if we had to adjust what we're paying out of the general fund and switch some to the infrastructure fund, we would still be able to increase our growth program in 27 with the extra funds. I don't believe that what will be needed to transfer, even if nothing happens, will be needed. Um, that whole 650000 will not be in fiscal year 27 going forward, that you would still increase the growth program on so, what are we? I know I ask you this every time. I know. Do we have any better idea of what we might get for the results of the magic truck? Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> just this is the magic truck. Yeah, actually, that's a magic bus. The uh, second uh, meeting in November is what we're currently anticipating for the uh, CMAP. Uh, Payment maintenance uh, presentation, and uh, we're also working with EDI uh, to bring forward uh, the proposed uh, road pro program, which might be the first meeting in December. Okay. So, I think this will work. I have more confidence in just talking. Like, I don't want to quick future revenues as far as this position goes, but knowing what we have already, you approve one and you're in the process of another one, that those and what we know from the businesses that are going to be there, that it would more than cover the cost in sales tax. That's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, we, we've had to do this over and over, and I, I was conservative on my estimates for those new um, businesses, just that's just how I invited it conservatively, and we are still above what what was needed plus. It's pretty exciting. It is. There's but a lot just, there's a lot going on. Just made some recent decisions as a board that basically opened up another goal that's gonna make more of those opportunities come through. Well the money's been there and the revenue is there and there's other things coming just what this board chooses to do in the direction that you choose to go in. And that's, you know, we can we can sit here and do nothing and then just say, okay, we'll just take whatever the bond drops off. There's gonna be that was that all that bond is for a road, right? That was the extension of division. So we put a road in. And I jokingly said road to nowhere because there's no development near it. So we put so great, we use tax dollars to do that. That bond's gonna fall off. Now you've just got more you know, availability. Right. And so it changed, instead of saying, let's put another road in, we have roads to maintain, right. his numbers, we will get there. We will actually get more when that falls off. But at the same time, it's still not enough. I want to get to a point where we can, and Brent's going to go like this to me in a second, but we can freeze the tax levy yes. because we're generating enough revenue that we don't need to go to the residents. That's right. really what this is all about. I mean, I kind of knew it. Economic development person is kind of <clears throat> what we're doing now. I guess it's an analogy um, is a for sale sign in the yard and that's it, versus, versus mm -hmm. going and getting a real estate agent to sell your house. Right. That's a good analogy. Well, it's the, it's the good real estate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, before, again to the town center committee, we're in the process of creating a sales pitch. A document. This is so we've discussed having a village board that's ready to do something. We've discussed having a community that's been ready to do something. Um, to have a complete staff, to have all of our ducks in a row. These are the things that we've done. We're ready to go. Can you do this? And all they have to do is develop. It. We and if we have all the people in all the right places, and we've got from my assessment so far, this village board, like we're we're like one step away. It's a big step, but we're <laughs> one step away. And this puts us, this is like a big, big piece of that puzzle. 
I find myself at times in, in saying to Walter, because they obviously they get calls at the community development, and I always find myself saying, well, do you have like a running list of who's looking for what, who's looking for what? That's the economic developer's job, because we're, when we talk about the town center committee, it's all the things that you need to make that a go. That developer should know, or our economic developer should know, those are all the things that they need. All right, let's go put those pieces of the puzzle together, because here I am meeting me with developers saying, well, these are the things we want in there, and we already know that this person would do it, this person would do it, and, but there's nowhere to go. So it's now saying to that developer, here's the plan, this is how much square feet we need, and here's a list of occupants that we know will come to Sugar Grove. And then you just try to put those pieces of the puzzle together, right? Where would we put these persons? Uh, we've talked about public works building, but obviously they have a home in the new village hall. Because I think public works has availability in the private. Has anybody discussed this before? <laughs> you have, uh, you have a, availability in private homes up there. <laughs> Take a rinse off and move right over public works. <laughs> I, well, I, I thought that if we looked at uh, the uh, previous uh, part time economic developers. We, well, we did, but I think that might be small. But who, who's next to Brad? Is it, a, is it a vacancy? No. What about the, what about where Julie sits? The computer? I mean, there's a huge open area over there. I've never seen We'll figure it out. How's that? Yeah. And again, if you know, this guy's doing his, doing his job or gal, they need an office. Right. They just need a place. I mean, that's, that's theory there, too. They, they, they can be in a cubicle over here. So we gotta figure that out. But they are a department head. It's it's hired as a department head, you know, position. So look at everybody's like, no, no. <laughs> 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 from the staff side. I might go to my office. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna put them over in the police department. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one of our 
close by here in communities that recently filled this position. Uh, conversation with them last week. They said that their candidate pool was really good. And the, uh, the statement was any of the three finalists they would have been thrilled to have. The fact that they had three, though. Yeah, that was three finalists. <laughs> there was more than that. It has to do with that. Man, it's like, there are people out there currently. Yeah, which is encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. In this climate. Yeah. 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 Are you ready for this? Yes. Well, like 
the fact that we also have to manage those appointments. And when there's yes, come exactly. up, yeah, people exactly. can die, move, whatever. It just becomes more legwork for the, the amount of time that it's happened in our history. So. I prefer option one, but no offense, Mark. We just went through picking a president pro tem. I would suggest having that president pro tem be the backup. I I agree. I think that keeping that within the board is, if you're looking for a backup plan, uh, and, and, and it's necessary, then it should stay within the board. So, I yeah. Would. The thought process was not that I was looking to have that uh, authority, if you will, or anybody that has. I think would be looking for it. The, the thought process was that the, the ordinance is pretty clear when the plan is received, the commission should be appointed. If the, the, the question hypothetically was, well, if the village president chooses not to appoint a commission for whatever reason, right. that is the backup another elected official, right. not knowing what the basis of that decision of why they just don't do it is, so it was to the idea, I'm not saying I'm advocating for it, but to see you know, what the reason that was in there was, you take it out of an individual who's an elected person's yeah. decision with the administrator, who then, you know, hopefully this does it, just what the ordinance says to do, good, bad, or ugly, whatever, correct or not, that's the ordinance is clear, you do it. I don't disagree. I agree. It's 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 you're it's hired it's by a presumably appointed by yeah. oh, uh, yeah. yeah. not yeah. some con conflicts yeah. of interest that uh, no, I, I, yeah, I, I greatly appreciate that. Like I say, I'm not going to argue to say it, it should be that. I'm just trying to explain the thought process yeah. of why it was that way. This is written in such a way that it shouldn't be subject to opinion, right? And so I think what happened the last time was there was an opinion that it wasn't a complaint and that became the stumbling block. And it needs to be a procedure that says, if any complaint is brought in, then this is what you do. And although staff felt that it was written that way, there was an interpretation by another person. You would have to assume that you have two rogue board members, the president and then the pro town. <laughs> and then you can make a third. I mean, if you really wanted to go down that road, I don't think it comes out of this this responsibility of the board, but you could have the president, they don't do the 14 days, then the pro temp does it. If that doesn't happen within a you know three-day window, then the board has to pull a meeting, and by majority, you get it done. You could do it and get it effectively done with the board. Yeah. So, Theoretically, if hypothetically the president and the pro tem were maybe the people that are being alleged to have, you know, they're the complainants, or no, the wait, sorry, what's the other end of that? Uh, so, so, yeah, responders, right? Um, uh, would we want a backup to the backup? Which would be the board, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, we would do that. Everything would be one. Just like, just like we just went through the emergency order, right? So there, we have a backup to the pro town. We have, there's a, there's a chain of command and the chief knows who to go to. So this would be no different. Yeah. Or we can just have it that way. Or we can have it that way. Regular board meetings. The, I think there's a the time time. Time. The issue with the 14 days. Well, that, but if they haven't done it 14 days and then the hotel doesn't do it, we're going to have another meeting within, unless it's the end of the month, it's like a long month, 65 to month, we're going to have a meeting. That's what we're going to have. Or you do it the same with the, with like the emergency order, and you just, and then it goes into who's a, who was the longest standing by vote, blah, 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 the same. Yeah. I just want to clarify, if the person who is being alleged to have violated something is the president, the current code, if we left that in there, it automatically goes to the administrator. Yeah. Okay, no, so we <laughs> will have to change that provision as well. Yeah, that's fine. And then you want it to just follow through with this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. 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 Right. It's really short time. Right. But the, the, the benefit of going to the board is that the president, the president pro tem, can make the decision that it's 
not a valid complaint, then you know, the board is kind of like an appeal to that decision. Correct. And we can say, no, we believe it is. That's a point. That's a point of connection. But it shouldn't even get to that point because to me it's very clerical. It's just a complaint comes in and you appoint. And to staff it was too, but that was the decision that we made. That was a valid complaint. It didn't comply. It didn't comply with the definition of a complaint. So we don't have to do it. And, and again, it kind of was started because the ethics ordinance was not codified. So what came in did not reference our ordinance. It referenced a different ordinance. So that was that was how that kind of got started. So we currently, our ethics ordinance is in there, and we are stipulating that you have to say what was actually done. So that part is removed. So I really think having that ethics ordinance actually codified is, takes 99.99% of that opportunity out. So, I mean, you, you certainly can make plans for that, but it should, it will most likely, you will get there. I think I understand what you're saying, but I want to repeat it just because that distinguishing that the complaint was a was a complaint, not that you're not, you know, the issue isn't whether it does or doesn't have merit in some, it's whether it was a violation. Right, right. The question is, is, is it actually a complaint? And if it is, the commission should hear it. And they can immediately go, yeah, there's nothing here. You know, it's, it, it doesn't. The question is, does it rise to what we define as a complaint? Right. That was the question. Yes. And if something hasn't been, and if a board hasn't been, or a commission hasn't been appointed within a certain time frame, then the board can make the decision of whether it was a complaint. Or for some other reason. Right. Whatever. Okay, I think we understand. Okay. So, just so you know, we haven't had Laura review this yet, because we want to get more direction from you. So, we will make the changes based on the discussion tonight, and have Laura review it. We'll bring it back. If it's ready by next meeting, you'll see it. If it's not, you'll see it at the next meeting. Okay. So, we're ready to review that process. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Mr. Tess Levy process. Matt. So, and I know this is new board, and I'm not sure who's familiar with the tax levy process. Um, so that's what I kind of wanted to go over, but also kind of get the board's feeling on what we currently have been doing since, like I said, back then, um, since the late 90s. So, tax levy process basically will start the first meeting in November. That is the announcement of the levy amount, so that's when you publicly have to say how much we're going to be levying. Um, it has to be recorded in the minutes, and that's 20 days prior to passage. Um, if over 5% of the prior year's levy is announced as what you're going to be approving, you have to have a truth in taxation public hearing. That hearing is at the next board meeting, which is, as you can see, not more than 14 or less than 7. Um, before you, you do that, you have to publish it, and then you can have a public hearing. You can do the public hearing both the same day, but because the 20-day period, you need to always pass it usually the first meeting in December. Um, it has to be filed with the county last meeting, uh, last Tuesday in December by 4th meeting. Usually it's never that late, but um, if you don't approve the tax levy or it doesn't get filed, you get zero property taxes for the next year. So it's a pretty important process. Um, so back in the 90s, they, uh, legislators created the property tax extension limit law, which is commonly known as PTEL. Um, and that's for non home rural communities. And that's basically the tax, which is your CPI of the previous year plus new construction. So no matter what you levy, unless you go out to referendum, you cannot get more than that amount. The county will reduce all of that for you. Since then, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the village has been over inflating, um, is essentially what it is making sure you're capturing all that new construction, annexations, anything of that sort, plus your CPI. What that does is it costs you to the taxation. Um, no matter what you're doing, like I said, if you don't go off a referendum to increase that PTEL limit, you're never going to get that amount of money. The capital will automatically reduce it to PTEL, which is CPI and new construction. So you'll never get it, even though the perception is that you're asking for. Because um, that amount is what gets published in the 
newspaper for the public here. So um, essentially, once that kind of all happens, if we did under 5%, so 4.99, you don't have to have a public here. That's all that that eliminates, is just having the public here. Um, so looking at just kind of the last 10 years, that's what that chart shows, uh, what the actual increases were on a year-to-year -year basis, um, using the assumption that if you did the 4.99%, um, what year, if any, did you lose? And we would have lost it back in 2012. You'd have lost that amount. So the amount difference that you would have lost is $10,532 back in 2012. But what that does is that you've now lost that forever. So that counts every single year that you would have gotten any type of increase. So from that year to the eight year period to date that we would have collected, you'd have lost about $105,000 in actual property tax revenue. And that will continue forever that you've lost that. If you did the 4.99. If we continued to do the overinflation, we can reduce it. In the past, it's been 50 to 60 percent. We can reduce it at actually what I've done estimated right now. I've done it at 30 percent. Because in reality, unless you're back in 2006 when you're moving with houses, that's when that really was a big thing. Because you got you're guessing at what that new construction is. You don't have that amount, and you don't have that EAP that the county has until after we've passed your tax. So everyone's guessing at what that number. Um, the only really time that you can get out of PTEL is if you become not from rural through referendum or outside of 25,000 population, you become automatic. So, this was kind of just to give an overview of the tax levy process since it will be starting the next meeting and the board, but also to kind of gauge the board on how we want to move forward with our tax levy process um, and request. I think one of the things Matt and I talked about, I think, in his recommendation is to continue to do a loan levy, but just know that that notice in the paper is going to show a whatever 30% or whatever increase. And typically, you know, some years we get nobody. I think I can never remember having more than one or two people come in during a board meeting, the public hearing, to say something. Um, but yeah, but we do. Whether it's the one or two people who show up, or we might get a phone call, I'm assuming it's like an official that you probably have in the past, and we're like, what are you doing to hold the dream of my property tax by 50%? Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is so that you have a document in front of you to help you explain to somebody, here's why it's shown that way, but what we're really projecting, especially on existing buildings, is 1.4 or whatever the number will be this next year. You know, so to try to be able to explain that.
Kane County, you let VSA come back and they tell you what you're going to get, reallocate it in each of your levies on how you want it to be coming to you. So, yes, I would say in everywhere but the county, because of the county being overwhelmed with the amount of people lacking the amount of employees needed to do tax levies um, and tax extension, yes, this is a very typical. Okay. Didn't we, didn't we at one time have like a dollar amount on an average house. Yes, that's published every year in the budget document. I do have, I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but it is published every year online. I also have a version of When they talk about our website, that increase, because I thought we had it before where it was like, I don't know, we had a dollar amount of what this would do to somebody's, and that's what you're talking about, that is, that is. So we have that for every year, uh, each year during when I was doing the FOA document, but I still do a document. We do that comparison of last year versus this year, what the actual increase from the village would be mm -hmm. on an average house. Yeah. I think, if I remember right, it is one specific house, but we use the same house every yeah. year. Yeah, we use so the same. The real life, like, yeah, we use the same thing. We don't kind of take a choose. We use the same thing every single year so that it doesn't falter. And that'll be the fourth report. I can make it in the work board. It's normally not, but I can make it. If you don't mind, just because we have public, I think might that, read the board report. I can't. I just can't. I can't remember what it. Because it was low for like a homeowner. It was, it was something low, and usually when explaining this and then having that number, most like the three that communicate are like all oh, when you when they start with a fifty percent or whatever this crazy number is, and like. It goes down to this, and on average, it's I mean, $6, dollars. Well, I don't know. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, I think last year was somewhere like $13. Yeah, yeah. it was like $13, and I was thinking it was less than a pizza. Yeah, so. and eventually, no. But yeah, it's, <laughs> I think I can add that to, uh, to that packet to show what that presentation of. Here's what we're anticipating the actual increase be. Well, and the other thing, it's hard to look at. Maybe look at it the other way too, just for us and our argument's sake, is what the average water user is and what that percentage saved was. Uh, it, you know, it's, everybody's going to say, "Well, don't don't go spend that money for me, right?" Just you're you're adding it up, and the village has needs too. But the board will get you know you get beat up over it because they don't equate to what we're doing to our portion of the tax bill. They just hear, you're part of my tax bill, you know, and it's, it's my whole tax bill. My taxes went up a thousand dollars last year. It's like, this is just the village's line item of your tax bill. And, and so um, it's a necessary evil. Uh, I would love to get us to a place where we can freeze our tax levy. Clearly, as we're moving dollars around through the budget, um, we're not there yet. But uh, I, I really do, I, that is a goal, and I hope we do get there. I don't think we're there yet. So this discussion is really, are you okay with Matt proceeding the way he's always done with the balloon levy? And, and I know I had calls and questions and people asked, and I said, that, you know, you have to go through and you have to explain it. But um, just proceeding that way. You guys want to head? I'm sorry? Tell them about that. Tell them about that. Exactly. That's what it says in the public hearing, and it still never happens. It is so funny. Is that a request? Yeah. <laughs> People make that happen. It's easier for a challenge. I'll tell them to call And look at the line that says, It sounds like Matt, you proceed as, as usual. That's what I would gather from that discussion. Thank you. So, just at the next meeting, that will be the announcement. It's just a strip. Have to announce that at the and okay. All right. It's not actually. A, a, you're not approving it either. It's, it's an announcement. You'll actually get a levy ordinance. Okay. Excellent. All right, staff reports. I like to go in order of the way they're in front of me. So you're up. Uh, the only one I'll just comment on. There's nothing new from what was in my uh, staff report um, since Friday, but um, just to uh, emphasize a little bit more, somebody understands the hammer. Farm topsoil stockpile. Uh, a little bit of a recap: the, the dirt is all gone. What's left there is the is, uh, essentially what's left. 
do the final grading and, and get the site right so we don't anticipate that any more will need to be taken, removed or any more brought, or any brought in. Um, given how late we are in the year, um, it's, there's not time. And, you know, we, I don't think any of us would have anticipated that it would probably be gone as quick as great that it was, but it wasn't quick enough that uh, we could get all the steps ready for the uh, eight, you know, have it seeded the way the HOA is and wants to seed it with the native prairie planting. So the few things that are going on is that on the site itself, um, public works will, will button it up for winter. Um, with all the rain lately, they haven't been able to get out there to build. Not true. Oh, were you, did you get out? Today, today. Oh, nice. I heard it all day. Uh, so I assume you chipped up all the trees that were down? Uh, no, not all. They're still out there. Okay. <laughs> Probably halfway. So as I understand, you'll, you'll get the, the trees that were taken down out of there, and then we do have to put uh, temporary seeding to stabilize the soil over winter for the stormwater ordinance. Yes. And anything else we're going to do this fall still? Or is that... No. <laughs> yeah. and That's then, um, so that over winter, the what we need to have happen is the, the goal, and it's, we did send a draft amendment to the annexation agreement Dash 323 that will free up use of firewood money to go toward finishing this up. We're waiting for a response from them, um, assuming we get that taken care of, and then um, uh, we'll work with the HOA and at least where the village staff is anticipating is the village will uh, be the kind of the, the, the lead with the contractor to come in to do the, the fine grading or final grading. And essentially turn the site over to the HOA, but they'll already be prepped to have the uh, whatever contract that they're going to use to come into the seating. Um, you know, and then hopefully, uh, you know, that all that all gets lined up for the appropriate time in the spring. It's kind of a, a, a seamless uh, transition. So a couple things we uh, we're working on right now is we do have the final grading plan, so we are talking to a contractor to get cost estimates on that, and, and that will be a big factor in determining. Um, the idea is that we lock it by low as is, uh, and we cover all those expenses, and the hope is that there's enough money left in Philo to pay for all the seating. Uh, we don't know for sure yet. It would be great if it's even a little bit left over that can go for an ongoing maintenance. Uh, um, so that's what we're trying to pull together right now. And did the boundary line agreement actually get sent over? It did not because I was not in the office all day today. Okay. So yes, that will, that will, we do have the uh, final agreement. So did we publish the public hearing on the matter for Walter for yes, November, yes, November 16th? So you should be able to prove it that night and uh, Big Rock will be a little bit behind us and doesn't require 30 day public hearing notice. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Brent? That's exciting. You know, it's been in the process for a while. Yeah, so great work on that guys. Considerably faster than I think anybody anticipated. Okay. One of those committee members on that uh, group went from mustache all the way to beard, his whole style. <laughs> it has to, it's been a change of trends as well. Uh, Matt, you are up. <laughs> so, uh, nothing really big up. I just do want to focus uh, on the second page of my progressive plan. Uh, so, since we were supposed to report by September 30th, I all I sent this through that page to kind of make it clean for reporting period. Uh, as you can see, between COVID expenses, payroll, and lost revenue, um, we were able to put it into the general fund about $41,500. The rest is in the water fund uh, until the future discussions of the board. Um, there's still like no update on when the next reporting period goes through. If they're extending that September, we don't know yet. So if they do, I'll then adjust again. Uh, if we have any additional expenses or anything that we can use to the general. Okay. Um, and then at the last meeting, Trustee Shumas wanted me to just kind of give a pension um, board update. We did have our meeting on Friday. So uh, main topics on Friday meeting was approving the two disabled still um, and the paramedical, which they did, a, they did continue to be disabled. Um, they did finally uh, uh, or formally approve their actuarial evaluation of tax budget requests, um, which I believe Brent got today in the mail from them, which they did have to do statutorily uh, to do. Um, the request this year was $775,000 um, and actually uh, 
decrease from last year's request um, of about forty thousand dollars, and that's due to uh, <laughs> and that's due to um, they we had a person that was on disability that became off disability um, to be able to provide them. So that drastically changed the actual evaluation. Um, it will change again next year though, because in that process you had somebody retire, so they're adding another. So this year it is down, um, and just to kind of give you that, that's at the hundred percent level we've been funding at the state mandatory um, amount, and that's this year is six hundred twenty-three thousand is what we're funding at. Um, so it went up sixty thousand. Our funding went up sixty thousand from last year. So now if, if we went to that hundred percent, it'd be about fifty. Now, additional, so that means the budget for next year. Um, that kind of was the main uh, topics. There was discussion briefly on the consolidation. Fire has been transferring assets, but we still haven't set dates for that. So the fire started October 1st, they have October 1st, November 1st, December 1st, and January 4th. Police have not set the dates of starting to do asset transfers. We're still in that process, so kind of just at a standstill right now until they approve that stuff. Um, outside of that, um, what's the current value of the fund? That was getting <laughs> I have, they also, uh, the audit was complete for the previous year, so the final um, ending was 5.394 million, which actually was an increase of one so that's a combination of our contributions, employee contributions, and investment income. So between employee and employer, they gained about six hundred and sixty-four thousand. Their investment income actually made eight hundred and fifty-eight thousand. So it was about a nineteen percent return last year. A lot of funds saw that. Um, this also gets us over the five million mark, which allows you to invest into more. Um, it, it gives you that ability to to get into a little bit different uh, markets. So um, that was. Fiscal year ending April 30th of 21. So actually, through the third quarter of the year, um, they've actually lost about $22,000. But in the year to date, which they're going by calendar year, uh, it has increased 255000 So they don't, the investment firm does not go by our fiscal year, they go by calendar year. Um, so they're still doing okay, but they it's not as good as last year. So. Questions? Thank you for the update. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I have to say it was enlightening actually because I don't think you've ever given a presentation or even an update as to what's gone on. So thank you for asking. Yeah. And I, I do. Only four times a year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. that's it's, it's, it's interesting. I love my role on that board. I will say I'll go on with your segment. It was a it was a lot of fun, hard work. Advocate for the police officers. But I'm certainly the downside of taking of taking this role. Is that I, I couldn't do that. But it was just, yeah, great well, experience. Yeah, well, that's good. And yeah. hopefully, the rest of the uh, commission likes it. So, all right, what do we have up, Mr. Walter? Uh, let's see what the get my report. Um, uh, Ryan Holmes, Bob Holmes, are here in completion. But I don't get an update on uh, what their barbecue points are uh, for us up at the bridge. Um, I'm sorry, did you say it's nearing completion? Yep. Really? I guess I need to try it. Yeah. Okay, is there a final grading with the driveway? Wow. That went fast. Yep. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry, please continue. Um, in the uh, uh, saga that is uh, depot, we have a new issue that's uh, arisen. Um, so we, we all know, you know about what happened with the roof material, and they dodged the bullet there. Uh, fortunately, they're not going to dodge the bullet with the uh, rooftop heating equipment, because that's the next thing that's uh, experiencing uh, uh, the uh, uh, shortages in the supply chain. Um, Right now, the, uh, the vendor is uh, expecting to deliver the, uh, the rooftop equipment uh, at the end of November. Um, and as you remember, uh, Deco 
needs to be out of their building, or they need to be in this new building by the end of this month. So in 12 days, um, they're going to be putting in a, a temporary heating system in the building. Um, our building inspector and fire department have uh, been in consultation with uh, the uh, general contractor and the, uh, the future owner of the building to discuss how that's going to occur and what their expectations and requirements are going to be for the, um, uh, the type of facility that they want to put in the building. And um, to make a long story short, they're probably going to end up with a propane system, which is going to require uh, propane tanks to be outside the building. So I don't want anybody to freak out when you see three or four 1,000, uh, uh, I forget what they even put in there. Um, it wouldn't be BTU. No. Uh, okay. Um, uh, storage containers that are out there, um, but they'll be temporary. And um, uh, so we're, uh, we're trying to, you know, reasonably accommodate uh, so they can uh, occupy the building for all days. Um, and I think that's uh, that's all the new stuff. Well, I applaud you in the village for, for helping them navigate this. All the credit goes to Chris. He's very creative. He knows the code inside and out. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, and he's even caught me in a few things, so. I mean, there's things that are just out of the control of, yeah. the, of the developer, and, and so I appreciate that the village is working with them and trying to find a solution. Yeah, I, I can speak in, in the industry. We, there's just crazy, crazy lead times, and you just, you just don't know. I mean, steel is insane. You know, steel manufacturers trying to get pieces and parts from this and this manufacturer and this manufacturer just to fill one order and it's yeah they don't give they're not given dates and they deliver on the line. Well we, we also experience that even with uh, you know residents with their little uh, you know um, you know room additions or uh, pools that they're putting in, you know, parts don't come and they can't complete it. You know, so, you know we, We've had people wait uh, six or eight weeks for a simple part in order to finish their pool installation, and you know, and the permits is open until that's done. So we got a lot of open permits because people are waiting for parts. Yeah, that's all. Of the time. Yeah, I They got things to do, we got things to do. So um, it, it's going to be a race. We get stuff first. Yeah, if I can add, I think I take this correct to all server. We had it was a virtual meeting with them on Friday yeah. that um, was focused on a, a, a list, if you will, of issues. And, um, and, and from that meeting, there's four or five. Yeah, four. And on some of them, there's we need to go back and look at something on our staff side. They need to go back on their side. I think there's two or three that at this point in time will be coming back to the board um, because we're just not on the same page yet. Um, so I think that um, that's something we can do in the next meeting or two if that's where we still sit while we're waiting for other things, you know, such as final. They want the approval to include all final plans. We're like, we're great as long as we have final plans. And um, so there's separate from that, the back and forth on uh, and engineering plans and various other things. So um, but I think that I'm hopeful that if I had to guess right now or estimate, I'd probably say that that second meeting in November, we hopefully could be back with you to say, okay, so these are issues that we need to go direction on. And, and I feel comfortable in saying that I believe what we're issues that are like that were brought up in the last board meeting and I think staff feels pretty confident that the position we're taking represents what the board discussed and I think we're what we're laying for them. And you heard the board too if you want to go back and kind of argue your case again you'd have the opportunity to do it but as one of us some yes yeah, side location is one of them that, uh, that we thought was, was pretty clear um, uh, you know, what, what we've told them is that uh, I, I believe 
believe we're on the same page. We're talking about the, the larger sign that would advertise the interior, you know, lots. At the lean and division, we think we're on the same page. And, and I say it that way because unfortunately throughout this project, there's been many times we thought we were on the same page. We had language in front of us, talked about it, and then in another iteration it was run on board. What happened? Uh, but on the other side, they're still insistent that um, that it doesn't, the village position is going to, it belongs near Van Owen, the entrance to this project, and they are insisting no doubt belongs up to the fuel station. So, what's your right next to each other? Uh, the whole subdivision timeline. Yes. Yeah. And, and we don't understand their logic, and we try to explain to them. Not only did we not understand it, the board was very clear that they thought it belonged down here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so that's one that. You know, we'll bring it back again and they can make their pitch and if, you, if they can pitch it, great. If they don't, then they're going to have to either, you know, put the sign where you want it or be able to walk away with the entire project over a sign. Um, I'm trying to remember if, uh, what a, one of the other one or two that uh, uh, fairly the, the, the other um, issue that we, it, it, it seems inconsequential, but to them it's a big deal. Um, uh, the whole issue of uh, common area elements in the SSA. Uh, in the event that there are common area elements, you know, we want the SSA to be able to address those if they don't do perform. And they absolutely refuse to include that. Absolutely refuse. Okay. So, yeah, and then I'd say there, there's, a, there's several others that I think we're either on the same page or I think we'll get there. But, you know, like I said, we're waiting in engineering. You know, they want us to lock in that this is all the right way that we're ever going to have to give you um, and we're like well we don't have a response from IDOC for one we don't know what the rest of your development is going to be <laughs> and they're like well we did traffic projections based on what we think the rest of the development will be so that's what the right it, it, we're like eh. so I mean they're really pushing hard to essentially and I get in theory where they're coming from but, but I think we believe they've gone too far and tried to eliminate any future risk or exposure. Just lock it all up right now. Like you've got three users in your face and a whole bunch of acres that we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, so, kind of hard for the village to say, it's all good. You know. so, the anyway, sign, the sign, good, the sign the, continues. The, apparently, that didn't pass the lab test. <laughs> the, uh, the good news is, is that, uh, like all developments, um, you know, they put an escrow of funds up front to help pay for our consultants, and as we use that money, we send them a bill, they got their first bills, and we got the check. So, which may seem routine, but that is always a milestone when you're dealing with the development. I mean, as long as they keep paying their bills, we, we believe we're still moving forward on the project. <laughs> <laughs> when they stop paying, that's when you go, oh, you know, they, so. Thanks for the update. Sure. Thank you. Probably more than you want. No, sorry. Any other questions for Walter? Okay. Chief? So we've been keeping the board up. These commissions are busy the past couple of months. And um, so this, you know, the last two weeks, uh, we had uh, the last meeting we discussed, we had every exam for the promotion for starting in uh, October 12th. We held hosted these oral interviews. Um, so that went from uh, the pre meeting starting at 4 30 to uh, about 10 o'clock. Three of them and uh, put in plenty of time, and then we came back the next day for another special meeting, and they completed the initial um, emotional targeting uh, list, and that's good for uh, 10 days. Uh, the candidates that are on that list, if they have no further points, they can make applications to apply their time to maybe move them up on the list. So, uh, in 10 days, um, after that, that uh, transition is over. October 27th will be another special meeting. Um, they'll finalize the list and they'll have an opportunity to, to promote our the list. So uh, make a recommendation to promote uh, to the sergeant. Um, so ideally, we probably are looking at a promotion at the end of October. It could be in, in, in right now the main phase. And then officially, if we want to do it at the next board meeting, um, we'll, we'll bring them in every morning. It's going to be, but not take effect until uh, that day. Or we can have the posthumous date of 
modem, and then you know, so they're still working there now. Um, the police commission uh, commissioners have the opportunity to go to training as well, so we have two brand new police commissioners. That's coming up in November. They typically uh, host the Illinois Board of Police and Fire Commissioners have the opportunity to go down to uh, Springfield or Southern Illinois, or they host the uh, training conference in Naperville. So we typically send them to the training conference in Naperville. Uh, they host it in Naperville, and it's going to be in November. So we'll be gone for a couple of days on the weekend, uh, get, getting certified in certain modules. And the way it's set up is you can't get all your modules in one conference. So you got to do it in succeeding conferences to so keep going back. So, um, so it's a nice little reward for them. Um, but and then, uh, yes, on Friday, I mentioned um, at the last meeting we had a closing date for the whole entry applications. We're doing at 4 o'clock last Friday. And the meeting is projected and took to go. So, we get any level of applications and so we're going to be studying the initial officer eligibility uh, promotion on the testing so that's coming up so um, we're still struggling uh, we got neighboring communities and other communities that are just finding flyers where they're offering 100,000 plus for officers to lateral perform so I'm going to be in with everybody else so. um, go ahead. Just... Um, 
President Cohen came out to, and, and a couple of the others came out for when we did um, Coffee with Heroes. So I make sure I change, change the name. Um, but that was a, a, a great morale booster. Um, you know, I, I know uh, Trustee White came in with his kids and got a little bit of a tour, um, you know, dropped off some treats. So uh, never made its way to the office, but the tummy was full. <laughs> Just the, the interaction, um, you know. So we're seeing, you know, a resurgence of people supporting the police again, getting tired of some of the stuff that's going on. So we're, we're getting people come up to the windows. But you know, I think you know we're competing with all our, you know, so we have, you know, flyer to hundred thousand dollars plus, you know, from lateral entry. It's like, that's all. It's unheard of, you know. Uh, well, I should say that because it's <laughs> it's a neighboring communities are offering this money. Selling this stuff, and, and believe me, I have to go back tomorrow, and I'm okay with this as a growth that's occurring with the economic development position. But in the, in the background, all my officers are going to be chatting about, hey, whatever. Yeah, well, wait a minute, you know, where are we at? You know, and, and it's you guys are doing your job, and you, you know, we understand, I understand that it's just going back to fulfill the rest of it because they, you know, it's really tunnel vision what we're seeing. So some of them get it, and you know, others don't. So. Have you these donations of candy for Halloween? We will. Yes. If you're interested and want to drop off some candy, you're more than welcome to. If not, we usually, you know, uh, you know, we'll be we'll be going out again this year and with uh, with all of us that know about uh, Sergeant Finale. He's not here. He's the one that started it. He retired, but you know, we're still continuing with the tradition of and and. Uh, it's a great tradition. The kids love it. Do you put that on Facebook? Just the just the need, because I'm sure there's so many people in the community that don't even know that they can just drop candy here, and that it helps that effort, you know. So. Pat, you have a favorite. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Then I handed him out. I'm like, who's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> I've seen your face twice this year, and that's what you look like. So every opportunity I can, but it's you know, but that's something that's coming. That well, immediately. That's immediately starting today. Oh, is that why I saw middle schoolers outside at the end of the day? Hopefully. There was a bunch of, and they were in regular clothes. They weren't in gym clothes. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that's that's their out and that, that's what it was presented to us as go outside and take a walk somewhere. It could be something where it's free time in the classroom as the weather gets worse, but for now, get them outside. Is that a K through twelve mandate or K through nine? Uh, I was told that it was a state mandate for the and the they didn't say they didn't say that it was specifically a element. They didn't say it wasn't, but they didn't say that it was. So, um, then, town center committee left, met last night, and we are very close. We did some, um, had some good discussion and some final tweaks to uh, our presentation that should be ready for the second board meeting in November, right? Yes. We should have it ready to show, and it is it looks great. Um, we've identified uh, kind of what we're thinking for what our town center space, how big we want that to be, um, green space, uh, water retention areas, um, a lot of great things. And Joe, to your comments, we we are planning on we are planning this. Uh, not for what our current needs are, but what we anticipate our needs to be, what we anticipate our community events to be, uh, the space not necessarily to be used for something the size of corn oil, but a space that can be used frequently with entertainment areas, with um, a lot, anything from smaller concerts or plays. Uh, just a, a very usable, uh, friendly space, walkable space. Um, and Walter's gotten into some, taught us a lot of very significant things about like how to plan that. Not a big long space because people aren't gonna go to the whole thing. So we're trying to make it a village square so that you can park in one spot, walk across to your coffee shop and then come back and hit some of the other retail spaces that we anticipate being there. Um, what else? So the offices, the village hall, we're gonna try and have, so our plan is to have uh, everybody except for public works over there. Uh, conference rooms, multi-use spaces, so. Police as well? No. Sorry, 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 so community <laughs> building, finance, admin, um, police will be here, they will be, there in their new gray building. And um, it will have multi-use spaces. It will have a lot of, uh, should, should we grow faster than expected, I think some of those spaces can be utilized for other things. But we're planning ahead, not current, for, for our part of it. Um, Is there anything else you want to share now? Um, I don't. About what? Leaning? No. I, I think one of the things that we are trying to do is identify a place in Sugar Grove, like a center within, like, here. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, that's a little smaller. <laughs> Not so much here. Here. here right in here. <laughs> Is, is how we're going to try to market it and let them be creative if they want to go with just like we're not thinking just the town center if they're thinking housing development so there's we're trying to make it as detailed as possible for our vision yet not make it too specific where people are going to say that's not that's what you're asking for I can't do let them have some creativity in it and let them have their uh uh, I guess fingerprint on it as well, but enough of a enough of a vision so that everybody gets what they want.
but I think you're, I'm really excited to share it. But our second board meeting in, which is the 16th, our next meeting is the 15th. So the 16th of November, we will have something to put in your hands for you to give us positive feedback. <laughs> well, and I also, as the note said, that rough, the draft copy, draft, 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 to all the board members. Looks great. Oh, they got it. They got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of blank spaces. Like, uh, didn't they copy the line, didn't I? Or maybe the, frame, the, the framework looked fantastic. Yeah. And so, so those, those place marks, that's, we that's identify who's doing, doing what and what is going in there and how we want that to look. And so that part of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the job that, uh, that is being done. Yeah. I don't know if she wanted credit, but she doesn't Linda like her name. Her, uh, she's doing the draft. Yeah. Linda? Yeah. She's doing the She's doing a great job. Yeah. It was a collaborative effort, but she's taken all of the thoughts from everybody's vision boards and <laughs> taken it, which was hard to do, and, and put it into into something that will hopefully resemble like this because it, I think it's equivalent in pages right now. This is 30, well, this one's 35 pages. I think that's right where we're at. Yeah. I mean, we're so it'll, it'll be something like that to, to give to a developer and say, and this is what you need to go do. So, um, anyway, that's exciting. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, is, I believe that's all I have. Yeah. All right. Trustee Shomas. Yeah, um, just a couple of, I, I'm going to make a brief statement before we get going. I'm sitting here listening to this, I'm dragging around, taking my kid to and from. It's interesting to, I mean, we've been in place in this board now for, I think it's shy of a six months still, right? Um, you know, hearing what we've, what's been accomplished so far, watching dirt get moved on, um, you know, well, I wasn't going to talk about him for farm. I'm saying specifically, I think we got, you know, buildings, okay, you know, new home going up in Denny. That was like, you know, one of our first meetings that we had back then. With the, the local contractor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. Sugar Grove did the, the building of the Sugar Grove Reservoir. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a little surreal sitting back here to get, what we can do in five months and see what the next couple of years are going to look like. Um, okay, so I guess to just my, my report. Um, uh, park district meeting was on the 11th. Um, fun part of the meeting got um, sidetracked a little bit by a, um, uh, a, a homeowner, a village a homeowner who came in and said, if I wanted to uh, ask for another park in my subdivision, how do I do it, right? So it was an interesting sort of discussion to watch and listen to. They, they educated this guy on the, on the process because um, uh, I don't think you realize it was as challenging as it was to do, right? And you, well, there's a couple of empty lots in the subdivision. Why well, can't we make it a park, right? Well, uh, I'm not minimizing the comment, but yeah. it's, it's that, okay, what's involved in, in getting in the park home? Uh, for the Year Commission, I unfortunately missed that meeting at, at, at an IEP for my son. Uh, I did review the agenda, um, and uh, it, it, the items of, of merit include renewal of uh, some uh, agreements, uh, license agreements for the two um, RC planning clubs that the county has in the Forest Preserve. One on uh, West Aurora, if there's any RC uh, planning people, I used to do that in my 20s, um, so uh, anyways, um, so uh, they were renewed, um, and uh, there was a resolution of Kenyon Farms in South Elgin for uh, a, uh, which is a subdivision, I guess, up there, uh, for a connection to the only program, which kind of went, hmm, we were talking about that, uh, I knew nothing about that project in particular, but um, uh, clearly it's out of the way of That's it. Okay, so I will mention it to a particular uh, member of the board, but can you put in your notes uh, a pass along what Joel was saying and 
just uh, say that you know our airport um, liaison has identified that if at, 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 at ever at any point the park district is inter interested in having lights out of the ball fields out there at the complex sports complex they need someone and it could just be um, you know staff reaching out to Steve or Amy at the airport. That would be great next one you attend. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Thanks, Mike. Heidi? Uh, no, I think our public comment from the individual from the library. It's all mine. Yeah. <laughs> Did it for me, so I'm good. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Trustee White? Um, as everybody knows, I'm sure that the uh, Former trustee Kevin Gary did pass away. Um, so, kind of a big moment, just a kind of moment of silence to remember. Kevin was a, a really good guy, but was always looking out for the best interest of the residents. And, uh, um, kind of somebody who you could. Uh, talk to, uh, get some good feedback from as a resident, and know that he was going to speak up for me. I think it's something you can know, really like that. Um, um, there's going to be a uh, park bench dedicated to him at the uh, volunteer park. Um, you got to find out the timing of the new and the plan. Uh, you know, so you know what that is. Unfortunately, the Prairie Building is now uh, rented out for an adult daycare. And so we can't do like a, like a house type of thing now. So we're trying to figure out um, you know, how we would be able to uh, have some sort of a service up here for them. But there is going to be a service on the third of down now that I'm for him.
but uh, it's either going to be nine or ten. So Sherry at the chamber is going to firm up that time. But if anybody can attend the ribbon cutting or mark it on your calendar for the 16th, I think. I mean, like we said, champagne bottles cracked on the building would be appropriate, but. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> Walter has all the shoes in the world that that won't happen. That will not be a <laughs> So, and one other thing I want to make you aware of: so the Chamber of Commerce is also having an after-hours uh, event on November fourth, and that will be held at the library. The library is hosting it at five thirty. And I am requesting that someone attend, as I will be out of town and Senator Villa will be there. So if anyone can attend, please let me know that you're gonna go, and I will certainly give you the agenda for the Senator. Um, one of them, I can tell you right now, because I've already written, is if you can talk about the crossing uh, here at 30 in uh, I, I did write to her asking if they would fund that, so if you're able to go and talk about you know, the need that is there, um, if you are able to get her here, please do. Um, it's important at the library. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I. That's all I wanted to bring up to you. Maybe maybe whoever comes to take her for a little walk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. you know what I noticed? I was driving. Um, I was driving down 47 a couple days ago, and there was a gentleman with a baby in a in like a jogger. Crossing at McDonald's, and I thought, dear God, do we not only need the light, we need a crosswalk. Because I don't know if that happens a lot, but I'm, they're crossing over in the middle of 47. It's just an accident waiting to happen in so many areas. So. Yeah, I just signed my daughter off for driver's ed. I'm just terrified, you know. <laughs> I'm like, there's certain parts of the road that are safe. Well, part of that training right out of the gate will be don't do this. Don't do yeah. yeah, this is, this is a real we'll terror. To uh, make a request uh, next meeting, if you could all don your your best attire for photo day. Oh God, she's I'm sorry. Oh, you, uh, you came. You're, you're too, too soon. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. I got my other photo day. I have to mark that. Is this like second like stop type of thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the past. We can do some glamour shots. Oh, Jamie, we can do some prom pictures. Yes. November 2nd. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Allison. Yeah, thank you. All right. And that's it. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, First on a second and a second on a trustee turn. Roll call, please, Allison. Trustee White. No. Trustee Harris. Aye. 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 Trustee Walter? Aye. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Trustee Shomas? Aye. Trustee Lennon? Aye. Motion passes, meeting adjourned. Thank you.